Hey guys, this tutorial is concerning Monday's homework over skill worksheet number 12, which is the meaning of percent. Of course, we all know from class that the meaning of percent is directly translated out of every 100. So what it does is it gives us kind of a common scale to compare things with, uh, uh, which is kind of neat looking at everything is out of 100. Anyways, um, starting with this, you'll notice on the worksheet that we're asking you, given several figures, to name what percent of the entire figure is shaded. And the number one thing to keep in mind here is that when we talk about percentages, we first express, express what we're talking about as a fraction. And, and the important thing to note here is that when we look at this fraction, we look at it as a part out of a whole. So in general, the bottom number always represents the total amount that we're talking about. So uh, let's look at a few of these figures, but our technique We'll have two techniques. You're going to have to decide which one works best in each situation or which one works best for you, but that consists of manipulating our denominator to be 100. Of course, if we can make the denominator 100, then the numerator would automatically tell us how many out of 100, and thus we would have a percentage. Uh, the other way would be to divide, to find a decimal, and I'll kind of show you that on, on number 9 here. Uh, if you tuned into this tutorial, you're lucky. You're actually going to get the answers to number 1 and number 9, and, you know, lucky you. You're doing what you need to be doing. So. Uh, let's start with number one. You notice they give you a graph that appears to be something like this. And, and here's the, the big question. Expressing this as a fraction first, I want to know how many total pieces there are. Of course, you notice there are five pieces. So out of five pieces, how many are shaded? Well, we know two of them are shaded. So we could say, you know, with 100% confidence, talk about percentage, that two-fifths of this figure is shaded. Now, we want to know this is a percentage. We would know this is a percentage if this had been out of 100 in the first place. So what we'll do here is we'll use this idea of equal ratios or a proportion to determine what this would have to be out of 100. Now I say, okay, I want this to be out of 100. This would be nice if it was out of 100. I don't know what this x is. At this point, the first thing I'd ask us to look for is a scale factor between 5 and 100 or 2 and 5. In this case, it's easier to determine what we could take times 5 to get 100. I know 5 goes into 100 because it ends in 0. So if I didn't know what I could take 5 times to get 100, I could work backwards and say, okay, let's take 100 divided by 5. That has to give us this scale factor here. In this case, I think we can safe, safely determine that the scale factor here is times 20. Neat thing is this. You also know that this number must be 20 times larger than this numerator if this is the setup of proportion or two equal ratios. So I say taking 2 times 20, we determine that x, or this unknown here, would have to be 40. Now the neat thing about this is, we know that two-fifths is the same as 40 out of 100, so I'd ask you, hey, what percent does this represent? We know since this is out of 100, this is 40%. Okay, so we say 40% of this figure happens to be shaded in. Now if you are tuning in, I still want you to write this down. You've got to have it on your paper, even though you can just copy my answer. Now let's look at number 9. You'll notice I didn't draw the picture in number 9, and the reason why is because, well, it's kind of a complex picture, but here's what I wanted to ask you in the first place. Well, how many total pieces there are? Okay, you'll notice already that I've written that there were 20 total pieces, and out of these 20, if you took a second to count all these like I did, uh, you determined that there were 13 out of the 20 that were shaded in. Now, a lot of you right now are saying, okay, well, you know what we could do? We could turn 20 into 100. That would be awesome. You know, and as a matter of fact, taking 20 times 5 would turn it into 100. We'd have to take the numerator times 5 to turn it into 100, which would be actually 13 times 5 is 65. Now, I kind of spoiled the problem for you here, but what I wanted to do was demonstrate the second technique, which is to divide to find a decimal. This is something we've done in class before. It consists of taking the numerator and dividing by the denominator. One interesting property uh, about fractions is that taking the numerator and dividing by the denominator always presents you with a decimal representation of this same part of a whole. So, Checking this out, we say, okay, how about we take 13 goes in the box because we're taking it and dividing it by 20. Now, this is good. We don't have to manipulate the decimal at all. We are dividing by a whole number divisor. But I do know this. 20 does not go into 1, nor does it go into 13. Uh, you can expect that when you do this with a proper fraction that you're always going to get a decimal. So let's build on a zero, and we said, well, how many times would 20 go into 130? Uh, well, you know, 20 times 5 is 100. We could stack another 20 on top of that, giving us 6. Of course, 6 times 2 is 12. Add to 0. Here's what we have. We have 120. Now, taking this away from 130, we have 10 left over. And, of course, you know I'm picky, so I want you to keep going until we don't have a remainder or we have a repeating decimal. I look at this, and I notice that 20 goes into 100 five times. Okay, 20 times 5 is 100. So the neat thing here is 
that there is no remainder if you can see that down there. Here's what I want you to notice though. We got 0.65 and of course we know on decimal numbers that this is the tens, the ones, but the cool thing is this. This is the tenths and this is the hundredths. Now if I said 65 hundredths, that is the same as stating that this fraction that we had already mentioned, 65 one hundredths. So this is why we're always changing decimals into percentages because it goes, goes out to the hundred spot. So scooching this decimal twice to the right, after dividing the numerator by the denominator, we were able to determine that this was 65% precisely. Here's what I want you to look for first. Every single time, let's try and turn this denominator into 100 if we can using a scale factor, or you could even do cross multiplication to determine this as a, as a percentage. But if all else fails, hey, let's express this shaded area as, as a part out of a total amount and divide the numerator by the denominator. Um, I actually encourage you to check your answers on a calculator, but I do want to see your work. Hope it helps.